There is a king seated among us. Let every heart receive him now. If there is praise, he will inhabit. There will be grace and mercy all around. Every burden will be lifted in his presence. Every trophy will be laid down at his feet. There is a name that reigns above all others. Jesus Christ, the King of to the Lamb, honor and glory, worthy is He who offered Him, buried in shame, risen in power, He is alive, the stone is broken.
Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the honor and all the praise this morning. Thanks for being able to gather in the building and online and worship you. Pray that you'd meet with us this morning, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys can have a seat if you'd like to. Just quickly, I want to read to you from Psalm chapter 77. Uh, Asaph, the writer of this song, and he says, I cry out to God without holding back. Oh, that God would listen to me. If something you're crying out to God for, it's the kind of thing you even wake up in the middle of the night and just feels heavy in you and you're like calling out for something. I don't even, maybe you don't even know what it is. It's just something. It's something. It says, when I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long, I pray with my hands lifted toward heaven, pleading. There can be no joy for me until he acts. I think of God. And I moan, overwhelmed with longing for help. You know, God will meet you in that place. A couple of chapters earlier, the same psalm writer Asaph says, We thank you, O God. We thank you because you are near. We have a God who is so near to us. It says, People everywhere, tell of your mighty miracles. God, you are so able to meet us in our spot of need if that need is just deep inside of us. God, I pray in these next moments as we worship that you would surround us in this building, surround the people joining from home. You would surround them with your presence, wrap them in your love, reaffirm your promises to us. Jesus, help your word, your worship of you to transform us, make space in us for you to work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
thank you for who you are. You are so holy. God, that you are above everything. And we just worship you. We give you all the power and dominion and authority. You have those things, God, but we recognize you for who you are. And we just thank you for loving us. And that in spite of the fact that you are so much bigger and more powerful, that you are in all things and through all things, that you were and that you always will be, but God, that you want to have a relationship with us. We just thank you for that. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. God, we thank you that you are a living God, that you are here with us. That you're in this place, God, that you are all over the world, whenever and wherever people are that we can celebrate you, that we can worship you. We just thank you for the honor and the privilege. And so we give you glory. We just say thank you and we love you and we worship you. I believe the presence of the living God I take. Goodness of your love to my father's heart I trust in who you say you are you are alive living and breathing here in this place speaking and healing your fullness and glory is right here before
Jesus, we love that you are the living God. You, your life changes us. You're not just some uh, distant deity that has no impact on our day to day. God, you're right here with us. Your life changes and transforms our life. I pray that you would do that through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. If you're in the building with us, kids, you can head to Kids Church. Ryan will meet you at the back if you want to join in there. Uh, we get to start a brand new series this morning. The series is called You in Five Years. You in Five Years. Have you ever had one of those birthdays where they, they put your age in balloons just in case you forgot and don't know how old you are? Uh, I had a bit of trouble remembering how old I was. I was trying to think of my 40, my 41, 41. So me in five years, imagining me when I'm 46. Okay, it's hard math, I know. Just however old you are, add five. And imagine you in five years. I hope that you're excited about you in five years, but I realize that's not always the case. For some reason, sometimes people don't like getting older. Oh, crazy, right? Uh, some people dread getting older. But I believe that we can actually build on who we are and we can come, become better and better as we add years to our life. I want you to know this morning that God's gone ahead of you into this year, into the next five years and beyond. And it can be okay. Uh, sometimes when it comes to a new year, and all of our planning for changes and all of our hopes for transformation and the problem about some of that is sometimes we actually think too small maybe you've heard this before but the most of us underestimate what we can do in the long term but we overestimate what we can do in the short term okay we, we overestimate uh, sorry we we underestimate we underestimate what we can do in the long term. When we think about five years from now, we think too small and we underestimate how different things could be. But we overestimate what I could get done tomorrow. Right? You got a big list and you're like, I'm going to be so different. All this stuff. And then tomorrow gets you're like, oh, I feel so terrible. I didn't do any of it. What even happened? Okay, we, we underestimate what can happen long term and we overestimate what we can get done in the short term. If we just stick with it, who could I be in 2028? 2020, that's crazy, hey? 2028, who could I be in five years if I just stick with it? If I just give it all I've got, if I'm serious about this thing, if I trust God who made the heavens and the earth, if I trust God who's for me and not against me and who gave his son he gave me his spirit. Who could I be five years from now? Romans chapter 13, starting in verse 11. Uh, reading in the message version, Paul says, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted and taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around and dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. God, I pray that you would help us. I pray that you would help us to see what you want us to see in your word this morning. Holy Spirit, that you would do the work inside of us that only you can do. God, help us to have big God imaginations to see what you would want us to see about who we can be in five years. In Jesus' name. Amen. Five years. A lot could change. 
good or bad. Here's some of my positive list of things that could change. Five years is long enough you could learn a new language. You could be proficient in a brand new language that you've never spoken before. Five years. Wouldn't that be crazy? All kinds of tools out there. Duolingo and Rosetta Stone, and you could learn a new language. Five years, you could get a degree in five years. Isn't that crazy? Uh, formal education, university, college, that's great. But even beyond that, if you wanted to just learn a new skill, you could learn a brand new skill in five years, something you've never tried before. If you want to take up woodworking, you could become a master woodworker in five years. Sports, maybe you've always wanted to run a marathon. You could be a marathon runner in five years. Complete an Ironman. Something crazy like that. Uh, kids, if you saved one dollar a day for the next five years, you'd have one thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. If you were five years old, you'd be a ten-year-old with nearly two grand in your bank account. That would be pretty cool, right? I, especially if you're a kid. I mean, two grand, I'm like, that'd be all right. But, but for a kid, that'd be pretty good. If you want to read more, in five years, you could read 60 books if you read one book a month. If an average book is about 200 pages, that's six pages a day. Probably take you about five or 10 minutes a day. To read 60 books. That would be pretty cool. In five years, you could radically transform your soul. Growing closer to God than you've ever been before. Wouldn't that be cool? Jesus' ministry on earth was three years. What if you gave yourself, the next five years, you gave yourself over to seeking God? God actually promised that those who seek him will find him. I think sometimes some of the problems in our life aren't so much about unanswered prayers, but they're about prayers that we never prayed. What if for the next five years you gave yourself to, to actually taking things to God, praying? I wonder how much peace we forfeit in our life because we don't go to God in prayer. What if for the next five years you sought God in prayer and in Scripture? What about memorizing the Bible? Maybe even just reading the Bible. Have you ever read the whole Bible. Do you know that if you read two chapters a day for the next five years, I'd recommend one chapter in the New Testament and one chapter in the Old Testament. Because if you just start in the Old Testament and you read through the Old Testament, you're going to get to Leviticus and you're going to get stuck and you're going to feel like maybe your life should just end there. Um, there's some, there's some cool things in there, but it can be hard slogging when you get to Leviticus and Chronicles. And, but just one, you can do it one chapter at a time, but we read one from the New Testament at the same time. Five years, two chapters a day, you will have read the Bible three times. Wouldn't that be cool? You in five years could have such a deeper knowledge of God's Word. You'd actually be becoming more like Jesus. When Jesus got into a hard spot, his reaction was to pull out a scripture from God's word. What if every time someone bugged you, because that happens, right? Do you have people that bug you sometimes? You don't have to point at them. But every time you, someone's bugging you, every time you were tempted to watch porn again, every time you wanted to go out and get drunk on a Friday night, or yell at your kids, what if a verse popped into your mind instead because you read it that morning or last week or whenever, but it was hidden in your heart, so now, that, now you're not going to go down that path because you have a sword to fight with in your hand. There could be some bad things you'd work on too. You know, five years from now, you could be going through the details of a messy divorce because of five years of neglecting your spouse. 
five years. It's long enough to get majorly addicted to drugs. You could have worked five or six or seven different jobs that you partially applied yourself to before you quit, got fired. Five years from now, you could have binged a whole lot of Netflix. Maybe that's an accomplishment you want. <laughs> uh, five years is long enough to rack up a mountain of credit card debt. Put on an extra 30 pounds that you didn't want. Smoke 36,500 cigarettes. All you'd have to do is a pack a day. Five years is long enough to do a lot for good or a lot for evil. Do you agree? Does that make sense? You could do some good things or you could do some bad things. By the time you get to five years from now, you will have traveled enough road. One way or another, some stuff's happened in your life. When I think about me at 46, that means my 13-year-old will be 18. That's even harder for me to believe. This series is all about uh, let's make good decisions. Let's make wise decisions. Let's make God-honoring decisions. That help us be the kind of person that, that God would want us to be and that really we want to be for ourselves. Let's get to five years from now and, and actually be excited about the decisions we've made and the person we've become. And this morning is kind of an introductory message to this whole series. We're planning about five weeks for this series, you in five years. In North America, the average person, uh, the average Jesus follower that attends church, attends church about once or twice a month. So you guys are like way above the average. Nice work. Because that, that's a good thing. I don't think anybody should set out to be, well, kind of hope to be average. That's not a good goal. Don't make that your objective. Uh, you could do pretty good, one message or two or three messages. If you're just here this morning or you're just tuning in online, and you get this one message, God, I pray, and as we put this message together, I've been praying that there's something here that grabs your heart and, and transforms something in you, the Spirit of God. That can happen any one of these messages. But you'll get the most out of it if you come to all of them. Because the way we preach in this series, it's like one message kind of broken up into five parts. And we do it that way because you don't want to sit here for three hours and listen to me talk, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean you could be polite and say yes, but I know the truth. You want to go home and do other things too. Uh, but this is kind of like the appetizer the five-course meal. It's just the introduction. Uh, but if I could give you this morning's message in one sentence, it would be this. The ways you let in become the ways that you are set in. The ways that you let into your life become the ways that you are set in in your life. We all have ways. Our ways are how we react to things that happen to us or around us. Our ways are, are how we speak. Our ways are our passions. Uh, your checking account probably points to your ways. Your text message history speaks of your ways. You, you have your ways. All of us do. I have, I have mine, too. Many of our ways were modeled to us by our parents. You might have said this before. You know, that's how mom handled conflict. Well, that's how dad spent money, so that's how I learned to spend money. Sometimes the, the ways that we have were modeled for us on TV or social media. We develop our ways from all kinds of things. But the, the ways that we let in become the ways that we're set in. Our worldview, our actions, our reactions, our words, they're all our ways. What I, I want to do is I'm trying to caution you. The ways you let in eventually become the ways that you're set in. Sometimes people speak negatively about going through the motions. 
Right? Have you heard that? Like you're just phoning it in, just going through the motions. You're not really engaged in what's happening. But going through the motions is only a problem if you're going through the wrong motions. Getting stuck in your ways can either be the worst thing or the best thing. Getting stuck in your ways is good if you're stuck in the, the right ways. So there's four things uh, from those verses in Romans 13 that I want to talk about this morning. And the first is that time is not on your side. Time is not on your side. Uh, twice in that text, Paul brought this concept of time being up. He said he doesn't want us to lose track of the time. He wants us to be aware of the time. Then he said the night is over and dawn is about to break. He wants us to understand the timing of things. And there, there's two Greek words for time. Uh, most of our New Testament of our Bibles was written in Greek. The two Greek words for time were chronos and keros. A chronos, it's like you might have a chronograph function on your watch. It's like generic time. Okay, what time is it? Uh, keros means strategic time or specific time. The right or opportune or critical moment. If you speak of keros, it's not time general. It's very specific. Uh, like if you're at the airport, uh, which I think not too many of us were at the holidays. <laughs> Desiree, Mitch, you guys kind of got stuck in Toronto, right? That would be terrible. I feel bad for you. <laughs> but normally, when you're at the airport, they call boarding, right? They call like pre-boarding. If you need a little extra assistance, you get on the plane, and then it's boarding zone one and zone two and zone three. And it's like priority boarding, which is basically the people that just paid more money than everyone else, right? Uh, or maybe those come first. Whatever order it is. But then you get to the stage of boarding where they're like, we're closing the door and the plane's going to leave. And that's Carol's time. It's this specific moment in time, this critical, opportune moment where, where something is finished and something new is going to happen. This plane is leaving. Whether you're on it or not, it's not coming back. It's not going to happen again. This time is done. Paul said it, the night is about to be over. The dawn is about to break. What he's referring to is the end of life, which, by the way, is hurtling towards you at breakneck speed. Look at how David put it. Psalm chapter 39, verse 5. He said, indeed, you have made my days as a hand's breath. And my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Say that, which means pause. Like a fog that appears in the morning and then vanishes. Your life seems so real right now, doesn't it? You're buying things, going places, double-clicking on Insta. But just before you know it, it's all going to vanish into thin air. You won't be living this life anymore. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Isn't this fun? Psalm chapter 90, verse 10. The 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. And may the Lord our God Show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. Uh, I think, sorry, I put up 17. It's supposed to be verse 12. Verse 12 says, teach us to realize the brevity of our life so that we may grow in wisdom. Some of you know, 17, 24, probably thinking, not me, in the prime of my life. Got so much ahead of me. You're going to blink, and decades will pass. And the longer you live, the faster it goes. Time is not on your side. Aristotle 
said that we should count time by heart throbs, meaning that every time your heart beats, it's a gift. And you're not guaranteed that it's going to happen again. Talking about you in five years, you might not live for three. Our life, Peter said, quoting the prophet Isaiah, 1 Peter, said, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Time is not on your side. Your life is just grass. Life is just like a flower. But by listening to God's word, we can tap into something that lasts forever. Something that's eternal. So the first thing is time is not on your side. The second thing is that future you is an exaggeration of current you. It's an exaggerated version of current you. Sometimes we think about the future a little bit romantically. Like it's this mysterious thing. Who am I going to be when I grow up? Who am I going to be in five years? I wonder, how's it going to happen? The thing is, you're going to be exactly like you. Just exaggerated. What do I mean? Well, if you're kind today, you're going to be kinder then. If you're generous today, you'll be more generous. Because these things deepen or they mature. Picture a more generous person that looks somewhat like you. Just a few more miles on the odometer. If you, today, if you're cruel, you will be more cruel. Those things just deepen down. And as it gets deeper into who you are, and it hardens and it forms into your character. If you're disciplined today, you'll be more disciplined. By the way, this makes the selection of a spouse so important. Because most people are looking for the wrong things. They're looking at the flower, being fooled by the grass, and not understanding that the things that get better with time are what's underneath. The things that get etched onto our soul. That's just a bonus. This isn't a sermon on who you're swiping. It's a sermon on who you're becoming. You see, time, time doesn't change who you are. It reveals who you are. It makes you more of who you are. Time isn't going to change you. When you think about future you, you think, well, I'm going to be different in the future. Things are going to change. You're probably going to be exactly like you are making choices. You're just going to be more set in your ways. Proverbs 11, 27 says, He who earnestly seeks good. If that's what you're doing, looking for good in people, looking for good in situations, looking for the good in life, living with faith-filled optimism, as you get older, you're going to find favor. It says, He who earnestly seeks good finds favor. But if you're seeking trouble, and seeking evil, if you're the first to find the problem in any situation, the first to find faults in everybody, how would we know that's true of you? Just read anything that you write. Comments, statements, emails, texts. Maybe it's the, the little quips or retorts or little things that you shoot your mouth off about, that you snicker at. If you're looking for evil, you're going to find trouble. Earlier in the book of Proverbs, it talks about a rolling stone. Chapter 26, it says, Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. If there's a critical nature to you, if you're rushing to cast judgment on the people around you, 
Jesus put it best, Matthew chapter 7, he says, the critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It comes back on you. You've probably heard this before. You are what you eat. You become like what you watch. You reap what you sow. It's a future you. It's not so mysterious. It's current you. Just exaggerated. Number three means good news. If you don't like what you're getting, you can change what you're doing. If you don't like what you're getting, you can change what you're doing. Here's what I mean. If you look back five years ago, 36-year-old me, some hard math again, remember who you were five years ago? A young, naive person. Five years ago, when you thought, who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be? And I don't mean the hard things you've gone through, the circumstances and situations you might wish you could change. But when you go back five years and you look forward to who you wanted to be by now, what kind of person you hoped to be? What kind of character you hoped to have? What kind of choices you were going to make? If you're disappointed now, you'll be more disappointed five years down the road. If you look on your younger self and you think, where's the guy or where's the girl that person hoped they were going to turn into? Well, the future is not going to change. It'll just be more exaggerated unless you change what you're doing. If you don't like what you've been getting, you need to change what you've been doing. To make some different decisions, different choices. Maybe value some different things. You need to watch out what ways you're letting in before they continue to set in. Pastor Greg Lowry puts it this way. He says, the evening of your life is determined by the morning of it. That kind of echoes back to Romans chapter 13. Paul wrote, about the night being about to end, and the dawn about to break. We're still living in the morning of life. We can make decisions before the dawn breaks. It's never too late to do the right thing. It's never too late to not harden your heart, but to yield, repent, seek God. To stop living for the flowers and the grass and to start living for the word of God. Uh, one last thing. Then we're going to park this message here. We'll pick it up again next week. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Uh, ongoing consistency is much more important than short-term intensity. Here's how I want you to respond to this message. I want you to respond with a measured determination. I don't want you to start by coming up with a list of ways that you're going to change. That's too premature. This is going to be a lot to bite off. This you in five years, it's a big thing. Whatever we bite off, we have to chew and swallow. I've watched my kids bite off some bites that are a little too big. Nearly choked to death. It's a terrible thing to watch. I might have actually experienced that myself, too. <laughs> it's like you're trying to chew this thing and like cover your mouth because it's half falling out. Terrible. Ongoing consistency. Every time trumps short-term flared-up intensity. Because ongoing, steady, slow, measured consistency. It allows you to tap into what's been called the most powerful force in the universe. Compound interest. Doesn't that get you excited? Albert Einstein, he was kind of a smart guy, right? Albert Einstein. He said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. 
He who doesn't pays it. Are you guys familiar with dominoes? Those little rectangular things. You, you can play all kinds of games. But dominoes, you're supposed to line them up, right? A little bit of space between, and you knock one over, and they all fall down in a row. Dominoes. You guys probably know Tic Tacs too, right? You guys know so many things. <laughs> Smart people. Tic Tacs are a little smaller than dominoes, right? It's a tiny little thing. Uh, if I put this at the end of dom the row of dominoes and knocked it over, it wouldn't knock over my row of dominoes. It's not big enough. It's not heavy enough. It's not strong enough. When we, when we come to trying to do big things, like imagine who we are in five years, try and take any kind of steps to get there. What am I even going to do? How do I make that thing happen? It seems so crazy. How do I become this person that I, I really want to be and I feel like God's put in my imagination and my possibilities? And How do I get there? If you took this little tic-tac, five millimeters, and I made another one, one and a half times the size, a little bit bigger, and I kept doing that, if I did that three or four times, I'd, I'd get to about the size of a domino. If I kept doing that 13 times, I'd get to three feet tall and 100 pounds. 13 times, that's all it takes. This little tic-tac couldn't knock over that big hundred pound domino. But if I put it at the beginning of that row of things, that we're just adding one and a half every time, we're knocking them all down. That, that's how compound interest works. Okay, that's, that's my best understanding of compound interest. Uh, so often, when we come to a new year and we're planning who we want to be and we've made our list and our resolutions, and we get to March, three months in, it just seems so, still so tiny. What am I even doing? I haven't made any progress. My life isn't any different. But it's this slow and steady and just keeping one step and one step and the next thing and the next thing. And quickly it starts adding up to something of significance. And the thing that, that God put in your heart that you dreamed about and you're looking ahead and going, who could I be? You really could. You really could be that person. But it's not getting all the way to the end to the 100-pound to the domino and trying to throw your tic-tac at it. You start one step at a time with the little things. Uh, good and evil. C.S. Lewis says this. Good and evil both increase at compound interest. That list of positive things and the list of negative things they both mushroom out of control. And that's why the smallest decisions we make in every way are of infinite importance. That one dollar a day, your kids are saving up for five years and it turned into nearly $2,000. If you did that for 50 years and you stuck those dollar a days under your mattress, you'd have just over $18,000. Which is kind of cool, but I'm honestly not that excited about. It's a long time for $18,000. If you could invest that at 5% interest compounded, month, compounded monthly, it's about $80,000. That's, that's a little better, right? That's a pretty good return. 10% be about half a million. That's compound interest. I could get excited about that. But it's the little things consistently, starting with a little step, a little step, day after day. It works on the negative side, though, too. If you spent a dollar a day on your credit cards and let them charge you interest, the average is about 20%. For 50 years, it would be $36 million. Just spending a dollar a day, it's just a dollar a day, what does it matter? These things add up quickly. When the, the ways that you let in, when they become what you're set in, this is a thing in math. It's called the, the wheat and checkerboard problem. You guys love math, right? So much fun. The wheat and checkerboard problem says if you, if you had one kernel of wheat, 
one little grain of wheat and you doubled it for every board on the checkerboard, how many would you get? There's 64 squares on a checkerboard. Just think of a number in your head. What do you think? What do you think that would turn into? Do your quick math, you're just in your head. This is compound interest. This is how it works. Uh, the number is actually 18 and a half quintillion. So that's 18 followed by 18 numbers, rounded 18 and a half. It's 18, four, six, five, something. It's crazy, right? Just one little grain. Just doubled it 64 times. What one little thing could have huge ripple impact on your life. Uh, in Australia, they did this study. Uh, they, took, they took a group of people, uh, average age was 39 years old. And they told half of them that every time it's sunny out, put on a high-powered SPF sunscreen, like, like an SPF 50 or something like that. Every time it's sunny out, put on some SPF 50. And they told the other half of the group that every day, just as part of your morning routine, put on an SPF 15. Make it part of your morning routine, wear an SPF 15 every day. And after four and a half years, which works out perfect for this, it's almost five years, right? You in five years. After four and a half years, they, they took pictures of both groups, the before and the after picture. And the, the group that were told to wear this SPF 50 every time it's sunny out, they looked at their pictures and everyone, including the people in the pictures, said, whoa, I look older. It's only five years, but wow, you can tell a difference. Wrinkles and sunspots and all this stuff. You guys know what it looks like to get older, right? They knew that they looked older. The, the group that wore SPF 15 every day, everyone looked at the pictures and they said, they're the same. There's no difference. We can't tell the difference. They looked virtually identical. I'm not trying to sell you sunscreen or anything. But it turns out that slow, steady consistency beats the flared up, oh, it's sunny out, I gotta put on the high power. Beats it every time. And what's true of your skin is also true of your soul. So let's circle back to what we started with. Now what's, the, what's the face that you get stuck with? What's the life that you get stuck with? It's like your mom might have told you when you were making faces at each other. Now, don't keep making that faces or I'll stick that way. There's actually some science behind that. You know, you, you can have uh, smile lines or, or wrinkles depending on your normal, normal face, normal state of your mind and how you live. The life you get stuck with is the life you make. So let's make a good one. We can make choices and decisions that lead us on a path towards God. And the life that I think you really want for yourself. God, I pray that you would help us. We need you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we need you to lead our life. To help us make the decisions that will transform us into the person that you want us to be. Even this week, help us to have godly imagination. Think about who we could be in five years. Start pointing us in the direction of the little, steady, regular, consistent things we can do to live that life. God, I pray that we would know you. This isn't just something we do on our own. This is something we do as Jesus followers. We want our life to be filled by you and marked by you. Lead us, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Find me in the valley Standing with my hands held high The valley will never take my song Find me in the desert Holding on to you for life The desert will never take my song Oh, the desert will never take my song And I will praise you I will praise you And I won't let the stones cry I won't let the stones cry out I will praise you Something in me has to And I won't let the stones Yeah.
finish out of everything you do. I am on the mountain. I was made to test it. Whoever you will have, I saw. Oh, forever. can have a seat. Uh, when we're becoming the person that we want to be, one of the powerful things is to surround ourselves uh, with community that amplifies the, the character and the qualities we want to be like. Uh, so we have some community opportunities starting up in January, because January is the time to restart things, right? Uh, youth group restarts this week, uh, Friday 7 till 9. It's for grades 7 till 12. So Friday, uh, right here at the church, 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Everyone in grades 7 to 12 is welcome to join in. Uh, Kids Relate Group doesn't start this week. It starts next week. So if you come this Tuesday, there's nobody here. It starts next week. It's for grades 3 to 6. It's from 6.30 till 8.30 here at the church. And that same night, uh, we have an, a Relate Group for everybody else as well. So adults, teens, young adults, everybody, you're invited Tuesdays at 6.30. Uh, there'll be the kids relate group for grades three to six and there's uh, child care for kids younger than that and we're starting a brand new video based series next week uh, called redeeming your time it's by jordan rayner uh, it's on our uh, right now media uh, that you can get a subscription for on our website if you want to check out stuff on there we'll do that one together starting next tuesday here at the church 6 30 and then brand new starting this january it's our young adults relate group that will start January 28th. 
Uh, it'll be a once a month thing, uh, seven till nine here at the church. All those fun lines mean that we're playing laser tag. Uh, so young adults, it's for ages 18 to 30. Isn't that right? That's not on my paper. I forget things easily. I get mixed up so easy on stuff. Uh, dessert auction. We had a dessert auction. Was that in November, December? Whenever that big snowstorm was. You guys remember Snowmageddon here in Nipawin? It was crazy, right? And we did the whole dessert auction online because nobody wanted to drive for some reason. <laughs> some reason, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we couldn't drive anywhere. It was fun to do it online, but we're going to have another one because it's just so much more fun to eat dessert together. So Sunday, February 5th here at the church, 6.30. The ways you participate in that, you can bake something if you'd like to and bring it and we'll auction it off. You can come and bid on stuff, and that's a lot of fun. Or if you want to, you can just come. There's always lots of dessert around. Come and have fun with us and eat dessert together. The last thing, it's a lot farther off. It's our kids' place. It's a licensed after-school care program. We're planning to start fall 2023. Renovations start hopefully the end of this month for that. So we're excited for lots of stuff coming up in the future. We're excited, right? Can't you tell? I, I always do. Always excited. The most you'll ever get. <laughs> uh, if you want to participate in giving and generosity with us, uh, our mission here is giving hope by bringing people into real relationships, authentic faith in Jesus. You can do that. Information's online. Ty and Chanel can help you at the Welcome Center. Our information's on the screen. You can give online, text, all that kind of stuff. We pray for you. God, I pray that you would help us. So we imagine this week, help us to imagine with you. Holy Spirit, uh, fill our life, fill our minds. Help us to see a picture of who we could be as we partner with you. Help us to seek you and find you, be in your presence. God, lead us. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.